For many of us, summer is on its way. And for many of us, summer is leaving and we're feeling, oh my Lord. It's a really good opportunity to look at how we can make ourselves feel like we've been in the sun when we haven't been in the sun. We're going to learn that today with Ray Morris. Now, Ray, as many of you know, internationally renowned makeup artist, author of many books on makeup. I'm going to get on Ray now and say good morning. We're both going to wear glasses for a while. Good morning, my darling. Well, good evening to you, Ray. Good what evening. Time when we brought out the bronzer, Ray, I always called it um, holiday in a pot. Like when you're looking at your face, oh, do you start with highlighter or bronzer? I normally start with bronzer first and I highlight because sometimes I want to bronze areas that I want to highlight as well. What's a bronzing colour that that you know your skin, if you could go one or two shades deep or if you're on holidays, what yeah. colour of skin would you go to and stay in that lane? It's a nice place to start. I mean, people who do match to me on Trini London, we kind of, when we give them a bronzing shade, we're generally looking at the undertone of their skin and whether they're sort of neutral, warm or cool. And then we advise them. There's four shades. There's Genster, Gaia, mm -hmm. in there. Swala and our new one, Naomi. And to me, that covers every skin tone. Yeah, absolutely. It does. Right. Because the great thing with cream products is you can, I, I look at them like a stocking over the skin. And that's why you don't need 17 shades of bronzer. Like I've only no. ever had three or four in my kit my, and I do all skin tones. So if I went and put, went and sprayed myself really brown or put a typical bronzing shade, it's not going to look right on my skin. And the thing is, there's no point having a real bronze face without a bronze body. It's something that's really important. Yeah. So once you're finished doing your makeup at all times, always put like a singlet shirt on put your chin here take a photo with, with yeah and yeah. make sure the bronze is still sitting within your skin tone so for me when you want to bronze a pale skin it is bronze and blush right. so yeah with me i'm in there so all the gaia is that how you say this name? gaia i'm gonna gaia? do gaia okay. as well so if you notice, the first place I'm going is around my hairline, which you might think that's really odd. How come you're more tan? When you bronze around the hairline, your whole face actually looks like it's got more color. It's weird, yeah. I know. Yeah. But I know. putting bronzer just here doesn't make you look more tanned. You're kind of bronzing and slightly contouring at the same time. I have a, a relatively tall forehead. So if you have yeah. a shorter forehead and less space to play yeah. with compared to a long right. forehead, what are the yeah. tricks? Ray that you can okay. do so the only thing I do differently if you've got quite a high forehead just think yeah. of it like a c shape like a moon go as close okay. into the hairline as you can obviously blonde hair be a little bit careful if you get bronzer or cream product into blonde hair just take micellar water and a tissue and it removes it from hair without making the skin oily yeah. if you've got a really low forehead you just bronze in on the sides but one more thing I want you to do Trini is a really good trick because you actually sit even slightly more in the Soella family of bronzing now Gaia just, with a bit of swala yeah take the guy okay. and i want you to do a light wash over your whole forehead now take the soala and do what i just showed you where you go up into the hairline oh. I'm like double bronzing you here double bronze. double bronzing you. Go up there. So that's it and blend see the finger you're using to put it on now i want you to swap your fingers see you've always yep. see, like i do with the brush clean yep. fingers to then blend it in and you really think i should go right in the hairline what do i do about Absolutely. like where it's paler there do you think i should go in Okay, so there's something that I notice, and I'm glad you do. See how your part's paler? Yeah. We actually use makeup. You can take your product, but use a really thin, like a lip brush or a cotton pad. Really? Yeah, and just okay. go into that part, yeah. But, yeah, it is important if you're going to bronzer the hairline and you do have a part, you've got to colour that part in there. You go. It just softens it. It well, doesn't make yeah, the bronzer look so real now. And now we're going yeah. on the cheek. If you've got at like your skin tone, if you're like medium, dark, black, uh, darker skin tones, you can put bronzer as you would normally like to use a blush. That's absolutely fine. When okay. you're in my family, the really, really pale skin, if I put a brown bronzer on my skin, it doesn't always give it the life. So I, you know what I think my favorite trick with bronzers are? My yeah. absolute favorite thing for any form of bronzing is put a hint of rose on your cheek first. It's actually a trick I learned from the um, Victoria's Secret makeup artist. Whenever you're in doubt, put a hint of rose because that's what that's what cheeks look like naturally. So I'm gonna do blush blush first. It just gives that bit of life under the bronze because if you look at how skin bronzes, is, and when it looks the most beautiful, it's that sun-kissed bronze, not yeah. the spray tan bronze. And sun-kissed, or like you've been for a run, you know, and you've got that slight yeah. flushness to the skin. And that's all. I and agree. with pale skins, yeah, 
You agree. See, now if you do that, then you put your bronzer on top. So it's something that I've always, and it does take. Is that enough? Um, Can you see that, Ray? Yeah, perfect. Now put your bronzer on top. So what you're creating is that healthy, rosy, sun-kissed skin that is also tanned. And I think it's one of the most, again, go back to Victoria's Secrets, which everyone always references for bronzing okay. because we bronze those girls up. But yeah. they never have brown cheeks. They have a rosy brown. They have yeah, that they rose do. bronze, which is beautiful. So I think a lot of people maybe just do like BFF de-stress and then they do bronze and then they yeah. might or might not do blusher and then, you know, lip and eye. Yeah. Like this order, yeah. this layering is integral. It's like clothing. And you know that C shape I created yeah. here? I'm kind of continuing that bronze and it's basically all lightly over the cheek. I still like to keep it high. Yep, you're doing great. Even a wash across the eyes and a great place for bronzer is to hit it on that eyebrow bone because it's something like, you know how we talk about how we get a bit tall yeah. and puffy here? Because your bronzers aren't that glittery shimmer, the the that's where you, your sun the sun will naturally hit the brow bones. So people do naturally. So will you do it like we did contour recently, or are you saying more just on yes. the actual brow no, bone? No, just I'd even get a big brush. You can wash it over the whole eyelid, but you can wash this onto that eyebrow bone, this part of your eye. It actually. I, what I like about lightly bronzing that area, it gets rid of a bit of the puff on the yeah. eyelids because it actually just darkens it a hit. Yeah, right up to the hairline. I put a bit of rose on there. I'm coming a C shape all over my cheek. I'm just keeping it nice and high and a light wash on my eyelids. And then I like do a light wash across the nose. It's even really nice down the sides of the nose, but again, really, really softly. And then I like a hint of your bronzer and actually like to use it as a really light um, jawline contour. So where do you really, put it? Really under the jaw or on the okay. jaw? So to give a really beautiful, strong jawline, because you're going to yeah. gonna contour with this product as well. This is all you're going to remember with strong, youthful jawlines. It's you want to create a straight line from your chin to this bone under your ear, straight line. Mm -hmm. So if you were a bit not so defined here yeah you want to go under your jawline to create definition yeah if you want to make the face a little bit slimmer you just want to go on to the jawline and then what's really important where you are now the last trick of bronzing is pull it down under your neck yeah. because this part for medium to pale skins gets blocked from the sun so it's actually really pale so you can That's pull that down so really you, what, done what you've something. Done, yeah you've shaded here You've lightly, you've, you've hit the skin really gently where it's tanned. You've given yourself yeah. definition, but it's a believable bronze. I look like I'm facing the sunshine. I do, don't I? I feel that. Okay, should we get on now, darling, to a little bit of highlighter? Yes. And let's do highlighting. We're, all we're talking here, ladies and gentlemen, is we're just going to make the skin look naturally glowy, yeah. not artificially glowy. The really important thing with highlighting is you just want to see the glow when the light's on it. So it's one of those things if you're putting, say, let's talk about cheeks. When we highlight this area here, one thing I want you to always remember, try and make it a curved shape. You see a lot on social media. You'll see this all the time where they just go like that. When you have a straight highlight, it actually drags the face down um, okay, and it's, it can actually be quite aging. So if your cheekbones yeah. here, just take Don't it further. Don't have a in those, um, in those maybe those yeah. little. I'm starlight. So again... I mean, this light's a bit tricky, but you only want to see the glow as you turn. The one that Ray's using, this is Starlight there, which is yeah, our light really shade. Cool. I'm going to use Candlelight, which is our next shade in. Sorry, they're very difficult in this light. That's so beautiful. Um, then that's Sunlight really golden. is that far more golden, warmer shade. And yeah. then on this one yeah. is Firelight, which is a really beautiful yeah. kind of burnish um golden shade just pull it out a little bit further than what you think and put a beautiful curve what the curve does am I when doing it on face, top of my cheekbone or am i doing it just before it goes down i would go where the light would bounce off it so you technically are going on the top but just yep. make sure you don't go too close to your eyes you know? what's your rule of thumb of how far okay. down so i like it to come to a little curve so when you turn front on you're not seeing the light flat on the camera so i'll do a smaller c than what you think so okay. it should i reckon it should disappear before you come to the middle of the eye just i would mainly keep it more so it's, when you're straight ahead that it stops more on the outer corner near where your eyebrows sit because if you bring it in here it just yeah. it, it makes the face look puffy to full under i mean we don't want any more fullness under that area so just around that eye area here 
Um, great place to highlight and it's so beautiful. And you know what else you can do? You know, if you just want that incredible oh. luminite, luminite, yeah, beautiful. How good's that? This is so important that see how much sheen. Now, what I love about this is when you do see a lot of the Instagram highlighting, they have put, because there's so much makeup on the face, a lot of the features are removed. That's yeah. why so much contouring and highlighting has to be put back in to get that definition. Yeah. But it's highlighting moves with light, and I can't stress this enough. If you put on the slightest amount, it works perfectly because yeah. the light will do it for you. So when you turn, the light that – I mean, if you put more on, it just look crazy. Uh, this is why I called it the right light. Um, yeah, the centre of the that. nose is a beautiful place as well. Why um, is the centre of the nose a beautiful place? Tell me. Just – it gives the – because the skin's so thin, it just gives that sun-kissed, youthful, shiny okay. – I've just got – yeah. But there's a couple of things I don't do that is very common. So there's a big – more for the, the babies – little teenagers yeah. there's a yeah. big thing about highlighting the tip of the nose i don't like that um okay i find it very distracting especially in real life because no one really wants that part of the nose to explode but just down the center it, just, it, it makes the skin look healthy again okay. it should be subtle if you want to make your nose look more narrow please take a small brush and do the line really thin and it actually narrows your nose okay. if you want your nose to look wider if your nose nose is a bit pointed you can actually use a wider brush or a fingertip. So highlighting, you can actually do those little tricks to widen and narrow the nose. A great place to highlight, if you're quite flat in this part here, you can highlight just in there as well. Um, but look, another great place, I for us, Trini, this is not, I would not do this part, which is under that eyebrow bone, but to highlight there is great if you've got a flatter eyelid okay. or more of a mono lid. Yeah. But for you and me, I'm, we're not we going to come in here because it can make, yeah. but why we can go to make it eyes look more round that it's just the center of the eyeball of okay. the lid. And this can be I'm done if you're not wearing any makeup or after your eye makeup. And again, it just gives that beautiful soft light and it's just really important if there's any makeup artists watching this i always say don't ever highlight a face unless you've got light actually on it because it has to work with light and if you're in a darker room you shouldn't have this glowy glowy oily skin if you feel your cheekbones are too high um don't highlight those areas it's just like no. just picking those little battles and also if just so they're not too high that's a nice problem i have a nice problem i know, what a problem. I know. <laughs> That's that lips being too big, like you, Trini. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ray. Such a joy. Oh. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Darling, have a wonderful Thank evening you. in Australia. And everybody on um, this side of the world, have a wonderful day. Bye.